two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Hey, Kim, how are you? Good. <laughs> Very, very cool. Well, guys, we are still at the PGA Show 2020. It is day two. I'm sitting here with, I mean, I'm going to call you a legend. Sorry. <laughs> I have to call you a legend right now. Uh, sitting here with Kim Braley. Uh, I want to say the founder and start of KBS. Thanks for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, Kim, our, our viewers really love the brand. And I think what they really like is the story of how it all started, too. Do you mind giving me maybe like, let's go back in time and talk about frequency and talk about how to measure shafts and what you, what problem you solved okay. before everything started. All right. All right. This is going to take a little while. It's all right. Um, uh, we were in the golf club business uh, uh, and my dad had developed a golf club made out of titanium with tungsten weights and, uh, and it was a cavity back golf club. And this was in the, in the late seventies. Uh -huh. So uh, at that point in time, uh, you know, making golf clubs out of titanium and, and you know, especially in irons. Uh, well, of course, the titanium woods hadn't been invented yet. Right. But uh, so, so in making these clubs, we were trying to determine what was the optimum place to put the weights and, and, and those things. And there was only one place uh, that we were aware of that had an iron barn, and it was in West Palm Beach, and it was actually owned by Wilson. Okay. So they allowed us to, uh, to come down there and do some testing. So what we did is we got two heads that were absolutely identical in terms of uh, the moment of, of inertia of the both horizontal and vertical axis. And I did everything I could do to the shafts. I put them on the deflection board, I, you know, weighed them, I, put, I checked the CG just to make sure that they were absolutely the same. So when we got down to West Palm and we were doing the testing, uh, the fellow that was operating the, the, the robot, you know, got the first one going, you know, straight, you know, right down the middle and uh, everything's all good. So we put the next one in, in the exact same orientation, and it didn't even come close to going to really? the same place that the, that the original one did. So what we were trying to do is we were trying to create a benchmark so that we could do our testing. Sure. And, uh, you know, when, we, when, when that happened, you know, Dad and I just kind of looked at each other and, and are like, what is going on? What's going on here? So the guy that was operating the machine says, oh, no, don't worry about it. That happens all the time. And we're like, well, you know, it, 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 we didn't know what to say. Yeah. So anyway, we, we completed the day and we tried to do what kind of, we tried to do as best we could what we came down there to do. But on the, on the drive home, my dad said, uh, you know, Kim, there's, there's something wrong with those shafts. And I'm like, no, dad, I, I did everything. I, I, I put them on a deflection board. I, I weighed them. I checked the CG. Uh, you know, I did everything. And he said, well, there's something going on and uh, we, we know the heads were identical. Right. So the only other, uh, you know, the only, the well, only other variable there was the of elimination. Yeah. 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 And I actually was traveling a lot at that point in time. So I went away uh, for a few years. I was in South America and my dad calls me up and uh, he says, hey, Kim, I got to have to come home. It's time for you to stop contemplating your navel and come to work. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, and he had a really hard time uh, commuting. My, my dad's brilliant and uh, he, he and I can, we, we, we could communicate together to the point where we could answer, you know, if he started a sentence, I could complete it. Amazing. You, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You and, guys, you guys have that vibe together. Yeah. And, uh, and, and anyway, and, and he was having a, a tough time uh, getting, anyway, so he needed me to come, come to work for him and, and help him out. And needed the help. Figure out this whole frequency thing. Yeah. So basically he invented frequency matching. And uh, he had me kind of figure out how to make it, how to apply it to a set of golf clubs. Okay. Uh, you know, it was, you know, obviously the faster the thing oscillates, the stiffer it is. Right. And, and, and but we didn't know what the correct uh, increment uh, as far as trimming or how far the steps should be apart. We didn't yeah. know anything. So I, you know, back then I went to the library because that's how you did research. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately there was absolutely, no, and this is the University of Pennsylvania. This is a good library. Um, un unfortunately, there was absolutely nothing on steel golf shafts. What brought you to Philadelphia? That's my hometown. Yeah, uh, uh, Westchester. Is that where you're from? Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah, yeah, what? actually Unionville. But okay. Anyway, down a little bit south of. Uh, I live Philly. in I live in Roxborough, Maniunk, right now. Is that right? Yeah, I'm actually a, a fitter for TaylorMade. Nice. And that's my territory. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's a good territory. Yeah, it's fun. So where was I? Okay, so um, 
okay. the library. With the library. Oh, pen. okay, okay, okay. So I'm trying to research these things, and there was nothing there. I learned a lot about hickory. There was a ton of stuff about hickory. Mm. So I ended up studying ship mast and flag poles and fishing. There was some fishing pole stuff that was pretty interesting. Mm. And uh, I actually learned a lot with uh, ship mast and flag poles. But anyway, so uh, go back to the shop and start, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of physics involved. So, yeah. and I'm... I'm strong in that area. So we were able to mathematically figure out what we felt was the correct uh, stiffness throughout the set. Right. And so my dad says, uh, you know, here's what we need to do is we need to get the best players and, and, uh, and you know, make sure that we're doing this correctly. Sure. So we raised some money and uh, we went on tour for, you know, the plan was to go on tour for, you know, the amount of time that we needed in order to try to understand better and prove out what we thought was 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 correct who were some of those pros that maybe started testing the well, initial well, stuff you know uh it was the, the amazing part was uh there was absolute. The, we were the first trailer on tour there was absolutely no way. yep there was nobody the, yep we were the absolute first trailer what on year tour. was that do you remember this was about 1980 wow. and uh it could have been 79 could have been 81 but it was it was right in that it was right in that time frame what so, did you do on that truck? Were you building and measuring? And we, all that? we had frequency analyzer. Yeah. Uh, we didn't do a lot of building golf clubs. It was uh, we would we, what we would do is actually we, we would find somebody in the neighborhood, and they would just love it. We would come over with Ray Floyd's golf clubs, absolutely, you know, or, or whoever it happened to be. But Raymond was one of my dad's uh, biggest testers. And really, the guys that uh, play. I mean, we had Arnold Palmer. Or, I mean, it, we had everybody. I mean, it was we had people lined up. I, you know, to, to come into the trailer to l listen to what we had to say about golf shafts and what we were doing back then, we would take their favorite golf club. It seemed like everybody had a favorite golf club. Yeah. Uh, and we would match the entire set to that club. And and by then I, I had done it enough. So I, I, you know, I knew how to do that. You know, I, I knew what we needed to do to do that. And, um, and, and it, we basically just, it, it, we were doing R and D. Yeah. Um, and it was, but, but I in the you, field, it, you know? it was so much fun. You know, I mean, I remember the first time I had to give something to Arnold Palmer. I mean, I was, oh, were you shaking? Yes, I absolutely was shaking, you know, and actually this was not, this was when we were still in the club business and he, it was a wedge and you know, I, you know, I, dad told me to go give it to him and I'm like, you know, okay, you know, I give it to Mr. him and, and he's, uh, he, he was, we were standing on a car path and there was a, uh, it was a car path with a, uh, railroad ties along the edges and he looks at it. And he looks at it and he oh, friggin no. slammed it on the ground. And I'm like thinking, what the heck is going on here? And because I didn't realize that he was just making the club flatter. He, he, yeah, he actually banged it against the uh, railroad tie to, to flatten it out a little bit. The lie. The I'm lie, saying, yeah. yeah. And then he looks at it and he says, mm, that's good. okay, that's good. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then, you know, I went back to the trailer and told dad, hey, dad, this guy just slammed it. And, uh, you know, I just, and he says, oh, Kim, don't, he was just adjusting the lie, don't, you know. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. But, uh, it, you know, it was, I, you know, obviously I grew up playing golf yeah. and, uh, you know, to be around those people, uh, at a young age was, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was very exciting. Where'd you play when you grew up? I, I Kenneth square. Kenneth square. No way. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the clubs that, that we operate are right in that Newtown square area and Ardmore, uh -huh. all those awesome uh -huh. areas. Uh -huh. Um, amazing architecture. You know, incredible courses. Yes. yes. Um, so let's fast forward. Let's go to 2008. Okay, 2008. Um, I'd already done uh, Rifle and Project X, uh, and and uh, we were sold. Uh, the company. It was originally uh, my dad and I started this thing, and then uh, Brunswick bought us, okay. which, which was a, a huge uh, corporation. They were mainly involved in. Uh, People think bowling, but that was no. a very small part of it. It was marine business. Oh wow! Uh, they, they they were very very big in boats and motors. And, but anyway, so Brunswick bought us, and I moved to Connecticut, and um, which is where the factory was. Okay. Which was really, and that was really good for me because then I really started to understand how these things were made. Yeah. And I became the eventually uh, I became the manager of the plant, and uh, so I was responsible for talking to the customers, running this stuff through the factory. And, but, but what it did is it really allowed me to understand the manufacturing process. The whole process. The, absolutely, yeah. to the nth degree. And it, understood, it, made me, it allowed me to understand what the capabilities were. 
You know, what, what is it we can do? Yeah. What, where is it we can't go? You know, the, all, all, all those things. But, uh, and that was probably, um, in terms of, you know, giving me a base to work from, mm -hmm. that, that may have been one of the, uh, you know, one of the best things I did yeah. in terms of, you know, to allow me to be where, where I am today. So we were sold, we were sold to uh, True Temper yep. and uh, they were eliminating employee or they were eliminating, you know, their, their uh, rivals. So um, I had been fighting with these guys for a number of years and I wasn't about to go to work for them. So yeah. anyway, um, I uh, was able to take about nine months off and uh, this, I get a call from, uh, from, from, from uh, actually Larry Bodel, who was uh, at one time the, uh, he was in charge of sales and marketing for True Temper. Okay. Well, he was working for a company called FST. There you go. And they didn't, they, they, they uh, were, they had probably been making golf shafts for about 20 years, but what they did, their golf shafts were on the low end. Right. They were, they, they sold on price. Right. They didn't have a brand. So they brought me on board to create a brand. And that's where the KBS came that's from. That's where it came from. I think Phil was the first person I saw to play them. Uh, Maybe in 08. I'm sure others play them. Nah, there was a lot of the guys before Phil. He was the he was one of the first really big names. I think that's when I, yeah. I finally yeah. saw it. And I was working at Golfsmith, which is, you know, all about components. Uh -huh. like that's what they did. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're bankrupt now and not around. But the component side of golf was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather was a builder in the basement, led that all the tools to my dad. And me and my dad built my first set when I was eight, little junior oh, set. Uh -huh. And then um, 16 years old, I built another set with him. And then when I was finally a golfsmith, I was pulling shafts and doing my own projects. Uh -huh. And that's when I said, I'm buying a set of these KBSs and seeing what they're about. And it was right before I went to college and I played my whole college time with them. Fantastic. Yeah. So again, yeah. like this is. What for, was that the tour? What's that? Yeah. KBS okay, tour so that 120. Was our, that was our first shaft. Yeah, first shaft. That was yeah. the first one we came it, out And with. what it did was it gave me, I played S300s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's all I knew. Well, it just gave me that trajectory I was looking for and the feel, but also the dispersion. Yes. I, I was such, I landed such tighter buckets out there yeah. than what I used to do. Well, here's what, uh, I believe that you should be, un, the common, what, what, what people have thought for so long, and you know, when these things get handed down from generation to generation, after a while they become, they become almost fact. Yeah. But it, it, they used to say, or a lot of companies still do, uh, that you should play as flexible a shaft as you can control. Mm. And I believe in, I, I, I don't, I, I believe that you should play as stiff a shaft as you can load. There you go. Uh, the stiff, you know, that allows, you have to be able to load it. Yeah. And uh, what, so what, what that does is it increases the energy transfer. So unlike uh, what people think, that actually, uh, by doing it this way, it, the ball does actually go farther, but the real benefit is what you touched on, is the dispersion. Yeah. Uh, because of the way I uh, design shafts and that each, like if you, measure, if you measured a two inch section, the next two inch section, if we're going towards the tip, would have the exact amount of reduction in stiffness as the one above it. Wow. As the one above it, as the one above it, as the one above it, all the way throughout the shaft. So once that thing started, to load you don't want anything to get in the way you just want it to deliver flow. yeah you want it to flow and uh this uh, formula is one that allows that to happen and uh and, and and that's the reason why uh a lot of people say that uh kbs shafts feel soft in, in a positive way yeah uh, and they don't mean soft and stiffness they just mean it feels feels at impact, at impact. there's feels, almost a slight release yeah that you feel yeah and, yeah. and it's very pleasing versus yeah. a harsh feeling yes and 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 that is in in what that what what happens uh consequently you went into the 120s uh the 120s freak out in the low sixes uh the s did you say s3s you played mm -hmm. the s3s are uh in the high fours low fives yeah so you were playing a shaft that was a at least a full flex stiffer even though it's was a similar, it was actually lighter. It's it, yeah, yeah, it was actually 10 grams lighter. Yep. And, uh, but because of the, the way this thing delivers the, 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 the head, it, it, you were you're able to swing something that was a full flex stiffer than what you were used to. And, and that's, it, that it, kept it, me tighter. And it should have gotten you tighter. It should have. And, um, and uh, it, 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 you know, it just, it just feels good. I mean, it's, it's a, that, that formula allows us to, to, it just it just makes a product that really really feels good. When I when people ask me like in a fitting, because obviously I have a 
matrix of all these different brands, you know, they ask me, what, what's KBS all about? I'm like, just hit it. Just hit it and then we can talk. Yes. And usually after five or six swings, they don't have much to talk about. They're like, this is the chef we want to go with. Um, I love the moves that you guys have been making in these last 10 years of, of getting lighter, more stable. Now you have putter and driver shafts. It's 2020. Can you believe this? Yeah, it's, it's been moving fastly. What is the future of KBS? Or, or I should say, like, where are you guys focusing all of your efforts on? Uh, the majority of efforts this year are being focused on the driver. There you go. Uh, it uh, is, you know, this is a completely new thing for us. Yeah. Um, in, in getting to the driver, you know, we, we went through the hybrid, which was incredibly successful. Absolutely. The irons, which were incredibly successful. And that allowed, a, by, by, by doing that and working with those, uh, the hybrid and the, and the irons, uh, allowed me to understand how I could take what I did with steel shafts in can I or can I not transfer that exact same formula the way I the, you know the way I design yeah and 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 and, and go in, into graphite and we found out that it did with the hybrid we found out that you know hey this is this is what this is this going to work yeah this works and uh, anyway so that so we this is this 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 year is the first year that we've had a driver shaft mm -hmm. Um, we are just now introducing it on tour, and we already got some huge names playing it. I saw uh, I saw Phil hitting it last week. Yeah, you know, on yeah, the range. He, he had a yeah. You, so you saw that Instagram? I saw the video. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, he's one of them, obviously. Uh, I developed Project X with Phil, so I you really know, yeah, you know, specifically that was his shaft. Okay. And uh, anyway, so we've had a long history. So that's great. Um, it, so so anyway, as far as far as what I'm doing now is basically. Um, working with tour players, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of tour events this year. Awesome. Uh, going and, on the van? Yeah. Doing some, doing some talking? Yep. Yep. All so, right. it, it, and also yeah. uh, just trying to find out what it is that, what we need to do next. At this point in time, th this shaft, this TD shaft will be our KBS tour of the graphite. And then you, it's kind of the same thing's going to happen. It, yes. This thing will be the, it'll be the, kind of like the, the benchmark. Baseline, the base, the, the benchmark. benchmark. Yeah. I, actually, baseline's better. It, it's going to be the baseline of what we do going forward, just like the KBS tour was. I can see it now. I can literally see the path. So, you know, we're going to end up with a C taper type one. Right, we're right. going to end up with a S taper type one. You know, that, that will happen. It, uh, it's just that we don't know which direction we need to go in first. So by, you know, obviously maybe four or five months, maybe even less uh, in working with players uh, of all levels, not just tour players, but of all levels, sure. uh, we'll have a much better understanding of what it is we need to do next with that, with that, uh, with with that, uh, with the driver shaft. Yeah, that's really uh, exciting. In, in in steel right now, my canvas is full. I have every uh, every weight, every type of flat, every type of trajectory. Uh, I spin. It's pretty much covered. Yeah, it's pretty much covered yeah. from the now, max I, to I, the C taper. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's what it is from the max to the C taper. You know. Bringing in the graphite allowed us to do the bottom, well, not, I shouldn't say bottom, but the, the weaker areas yeah. uh, in a way that was still stable. Sure. Uh, when you get, you know, when you get to below 90 grams in a steel shaft, I'm sorry. I mean, there's just not enough material there to make it stable. I completely agree with you. And, uh, and that's why the TGI came out and, and exactly. just more stability exactly. and that lightweight. Exactly. Exactly. With the TGI, we... we uh, the TGI actually is more of a, uh, I shouldn't, stronger player shaft. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, and we, we didn't know that until we, you know, had a lot of people test it. And, and we found that, uh, you know, we, we found out with the, or with an average player, it felt a little bit boardy to it. Okay. So we knew what we needed to do. So then we came out with the Max. Yep. The Max had, a, it was much more uh, flexible profile. Yeah. And uh, for the average player, you know, the guy that's, uh, you know, the 90 mile an hour swing kind of sure. person, uh, it, it, that shaft, because of uh, the amount of spin and the height that it, that it, that it, uh, that it you know, would, would ordinarily hit at, it would fit uh, also a great deal of people. But, it, but that allowed us to get, the, you know, so, so just to finish the iron thing, that allowed us to finish the, 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 uh, the slower swing speed people. Cover, we, cover the whole range. We, yes. Yes. But, and, and. Anyway, so I'm really, really comfortable where I am with, with the irons right now. I would, I mean, it's it's such a stellar lineup. I mean, again, like I cover when I fit, I bring people through the all the brands, but I focus on you guys a lot because of the consistency 
in flight between shot and shot and shot. You know, I look at the differentials between, and, and irons are so important. Yes. Yeah. You know, to put them in the same spot. Well, um, everything that I've ever done, you know, I didn't even realize it back in, you know, when I was working with my dad and, you know, 7.0, 7.3, 7.5, 6.5, all these different uh, flexes that we had developed. And, you know, I, I really didn't realize I was fitting people. Yeah. You know, I had no idea. I was, you know. You were solving I, problems. Yeah. 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 yeah we, well, there was, you know, fitting there wasn't any, I don't think there it was wasn't such really a thing. around. No, yeah, well, no. it wasn't around. But we were doing that, not knowing it. And everything I've done in my entire career was based on fitting. And the entire KBS line is based on fitting. I'm, I'm, there's, you know, I, I, I it's the only part of our industry that's growing. Yeah. Um, and it, and it should be because if you're serious about this thing and you don't get fit, you're, you're wasting. You're, 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 you know, you're giving up a couple shots. You're for missing sure. out. You're giving giving up some shots for sure. But, in, in, you know, in answering your question, the, uh, the, the the focus this year is going to be on that driver. I'm excited. I, I, I really as, You are not as excited <laughs> as I am. Um, I have a, just a couple of random questions. Uh, if KBS was to have their own golf course, how many holes would it have? Would it have 18 or would it have a random number? No, no. We would have uh, 36 with a uh, nine-hole uh, par three. I love the nine-hole par three. That's yeah. awesome. Do you get to play often anymore? Yes, I, I play quite a bit. There you go. How, where do you travel in the U.S.? All over? Yeah, wherever. I, you know, I generally, you know, wherever the tour events are. So where are you home? Where's home for you? Home, Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Arizona, yes. Awesome. I love Scottsdale. I used to go there as a kid. I think that was actually where I first putted on a real green when I was like three or four years old. Well, with my with my dad. Well, uh, it's a golf destination. It's a golf you know? spot. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the number of tour players and all that. And, it's it's a great place for me to work. Yeah. Uh, Tom Kalinowski, who's my partner in, in R and D, uh, is a member at Whisper Rock, so he oh, works wow. up there a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has access to you know a lot of uh, really good players. I I I stay down to TPC and Greyhawk mainly, uh, which also we have a lot of. I mean, yeah. obviously it's TPC course. There's a lot of players there as well. But you know, in terms of doing research, I, it's the best place in the world. I mean, there's more testing hot, and well, there's just there's so many great golfers there. Yeah. And uh, there's more tour players in, in the Phoenix Valley than, uh, than any other place in the United States. That's true. So, um, I mean, I really appreciate the time, Kim. This was awesome. Again, I couldn't wait for this interview. Uh, I forgot that you're from Westchester, and it's just going to make me feel even warmer when I go back home to know that's where you came from. Uh, guys, if you haven't checked out KBS, you're completely missing out. I've been talking about it for years to all my friends. Uh, you have to check out the driver shaft. You have to check out their line. And uh, just excited for the growth and to continue to keep going. I'm really happy to meet you, man. Pleasure. Yeah, a lot of fun. All right, thank you.